Now let's get back to making some important videos. I'm going to cook a pie this evening, or maybe tomorrow evening. I might film that and put it up for you, but this is more important. We're going to get back to the mud flood Tartaria. I have found the most damning evidence of the mud flood in Siberia, Tartaria, which you'll see a little bit further on in the video. So just hang loose until we get to this. Okay, this is the map of Monday that we're looking at. 1451, apparently. It's upside down. There's the Mediterranean Sea. There's Italy sticking up upside down. Greece upside down. Lakes upside down. The rest of the world is upside down. And probably was upside down back then. Anyway, hold on. So now when we do go over to take a little look at Italy, you can see how sparsely populated it is according to this map. Bologna, one shed. Roma, one shed. Napoli, one shed. So all these Italians had one shed out the back. That's probably the Pope's private toilet. Anyway, now here as we start to move a little bit further east, you can see Rus Russia Bianca. But you can see the difference in the uh, architecture. As Rome just had one shed out the back, up here in Tartaria, northern Siberia, you had a huge array of magnificent cities. And this is not the only map that they all appear on. As you go back through the colored maps that have come up in the past eight, ten years, Tartarian maps, you can see that there were many cities up this part of the world. Of the world. Uh, we'll just go a little bit further. So look at some of these cities again. As we go up the coast here to the uh, sea of Tartaria, as it was known, magnificent cities, magnificent structures. I mean, they littered the entire coastline right across Alaska and right across the north of Canada. And they ain't there now, but they left something in their place. So this is the area that we're looking at. Now, uh, forgive me for the quality. I don't really have a whole lot of tech. <clears throat> But we're right up here in that same area, Central Siberian Plateau and the Lena River. And we're going to get into the Lena River Delta, where it's all happening. Yeah. So this is what it looks like from the sky. This is what it looks like from Google. And you've many tributaries going through this delta. Look at all these pot marks. We'll get around to those in a minute. All right. But we're still in the same area here. And this is what it looks like close up. They call these things uh, thermal karst lakes. And there's a big load of lies that go along with them, yeah? That they're millions of years old and that the permafrost causes them and it freezes and it uh, thaws. And uh, you, know, you know all the lies yourselves. A little bit of a closer up look and it looks like this. And these are all lakes, their depth of two to four meters, some of them 20, two to four feet. To, yeah, two meters, six feet, up to 20 feet. And you know what these are? These are craters from a, a boom, boom, and a boom, 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 knock your city down, blast your city all over the place. We're going to get there. Hold on. And uh, as you get up a bit closer, it looks like this. I have a theory on what these devices were made from that caused all this damage. I might get through to that at the end, okay? And as you get a little further back, up into Google, up higher, this is what we're looking at. Now, this looks like one of the most organized cities I have ever seen, ever. Right? North, south, east, west. And again, blown to smithereens. Anyway, let's continue. Now, what happened next is that a group of people have gone up there and done a high resolution and seismic ground penetrating radar 
on the area. And what you're about to see is gonna blow the whole thing wide open. Mud flood will, no one will be able to deny, deny mud flood after this in Tartaria. So bear with me as I go along here. I don't know, I don't have a whole lot of info on, on uh, where all this came from, but uh, there is some um, uh, names of who to, who did this here as we go along. Hold on. So this is some of their report. Now I'm gonna I'm not going to go through this with you, but you can if you want. Freeze this and read it. It just talks about the lakes and how the delta is. Uh, oh, here we go. The Salina Delta is characterized by several unique features that are either poorly understood or unexplained. Right, let's get around to explaining them. So this is who we're talking about who did this thing. Uh, high resolution seismic and ground penetrating radar profiling of a thermal karst lake in the western Lena Delta, northern Siberia. Mr. Some GJ Schwamborn, JK Dix, blah blah bull, bull, not Rothschild, Rothschild, blah Alfred Wegemer Institute of Polar and Marine Science, Potsdam, Germany, School of Ocean and Earth Science, Southampton Oceano Oceanography Centre, Southampton, UK. Maybe one of you, <coughs> maybe Campbell, uh, maybe Martin, or maybe even Philip Drusenden, who's up there in Russia, could look into this and bring this a bit further, because I ain't no good at researching, I ain't got a laptop. I never seen a computer up close in my life before. There's me and my mobile phone. And here's a little bit more that I found on uh, on this. Again, if you want, if it's, it's not going to be easy to read because it's not a really good uh, picture. But if you want, freeze it and read it. And uh, this is a little bit more that's got to do with it. Uh, part of their uh, survey. Don't understand what it means. And now here we are. Here is the result of the seismic ground penetrating radar. Okay, what have they got? We got a friggin' 12 story block of flats underground going all the way along, right underneath those thermal karst lakes. The bloody thing's been mud flooded and it's been covered over. I got some, it, it gets a little bit better. The picture gets better. So just bear with me here now, okay? This is the freakiest stuff. Now this is a little bit enlarged. Again, not great quality, a little bit enlarged. You can get it up a little bit closer. Oh man. No, that's not an apartment block, okay? That is an absolutely natural occurring thing that you find under the earth up in Siberia. Yeah. A foul language alert actually is what I should uh, let out. Now I'm messing about with the color a bit, darkening a little bit. You can see it very clearly and it goes around now i'm just moving from picture to picture here because there is a better resolution coming up now this is this image again here a bit highlighted you got a doorway and you got i would say eight or ten or twelve floors whoops in this apartment block. Now, uh, again, this is it up a little bit closer. Not great, not great footage. Hold on a sec. So yeah, it looks to me like some of these, uh, well, I mean, what the hell ha Dimitri, yes, Vladimir, could I borrow a cup of sugar from you, please? Of course, Vladimir. Remember, uh, two days ago, I gave you a jug of milk. Yes, I'll have that for you tomorrow. Yeah? <clears throat> Dimitri? Yes, Vladimir? What's that big, freaking, shiny thing coming towards us? Boom! Boom! Let me tell you, Dimitri never got his fucking jug of sugar back. Let me tell you that, right? And Vladimir and Dmitri are still in there, in that friggin' apartment. 
nuked, zapped, frozen, and an entire civilization wiped off the face of the earth. You know, I mean, a fucking goddamn 15 story block of flats everywhere. Everywhere. How many? How, you're talking billions killed, billions dead. Right? Now, let me get back over here to a little bit of uh, Google Earth for a minute, okay? So here we are. This is the Lena River Delta. And this is what the surface of the earth looks like. So this is what happened to all those wonderful people who lived in these wonderful cities. And I mean, this, these craters run all the way across Northern Russia, all the way across Siberia. There's the Lena River. All the way across Alaska. So you can ask what happened. Oh, it was an absolute accident. Yeah. I mean, it was Blitzkrieg on a massive scale with weapons of mass destruction that we have no clue what they are or where they came from. Yeah. But yet we know that they were there because it couldn't have been done. Now, who are they, who, 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 who's the culprit that they say that attacked Russia and blew the shit out of it, right? We are told it is Napoleon, right? Now, I live in France. Napoleon is everywhere. He's got, he's everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's statues, there's horses, there's this, that, or the other, around here anyway, right? Now, I have doubts about all that, because apparently he only went to Moscow. He didn't make it all the way to uh, northern Siberia, okay? And yet we have uh, a lot of information which tells us that the Russians and the French, or the Holy Roman Army is what Napoleon was, they joined forces to wipe out Tartaria, yeah. Somebody did, somebody wiped the whole place out. Now, how, the, how, how could this guy, Napoleon, have made it to Russia? All right. Now, again, this isn't a great picture, okay? But the story was that Napoleon was a short fella, five foot two, and all these other fellas all around him were all Five foot eight, five foot ten, six foot. Yeah, and they would walk by Napoleon and <laughs> shorty. I mean, he had a bit of a complex about that. But I don't buy that. I don't even buy Napoleon. But the people of the time, why did they call Napoleon a short fella? Right? Because this was what Napoleon was. He was one of these people, one of us, six foot tall guy, and he was in charge of everything. Now he had these eight to ten foot people with him standing around his guards or whatever and then his army was made up of these 12 to 14 feet people who perished in this war. These were the giants or the remnants of the giants that built our world. And back in the uh, 1800s and late 1800s, where you had a lot of black and white photography, you still had a lot of these eight, nine foot, 10 foot guys around. They're in lots and lots of photographs. But the secret about Napoleon being a wee short bastard is because he was our size. So these people got wiped out. They no longer are here or else they went north, right? This lot, they're gone too. You might see the odd one, the odd genetic remnant of one, okay? And how did he get here? His great, 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 great grandmother went to a dance one night and uh, never told anybody about it, right? So she had six kids, there were four of them were, five of them were this size and one of them popped out like this. This was the genetic remnants, basically. Now, let's get back to this dickhead Napoleon. He couldn't make his way to Russia. 
700,000 men and 200,000 horses made their way to Russia. And that's like me. I'm in central France right now. That's like me and all my neighbors being rounded up. And we got rounded up and we got to walk to Moscow. You fucking kidding me? How much food would a workhorse or a horse on the march eat each day? It would eat maybe 30 kilos of food a day, 200,000 horses. Do you know how much food that is? That's 6,000 tons of food per day for the horses and the animals marching all the way to Moscow. What, and a man on the march, 700,000 men on the march. And what would a man on the march eat in a day? He would eat three kilos of food. So if 200,000 men are eating three kilos of food, you're into 2,000 tons of food for the men and 6,000 tons of food for the horses each day while you walk to Moscow with no roads and no bridges and forests everywhere. It's all a load of shit. We've all been lied to. Napoleon's a fake character from history. Something much, much worse than what they tell us happened happened and it's the same all over the whole world but here is a painting or a drawing from the time when these people were apparently on the march and this march was the holy roman army on its way with tech with very high tech to siberia to tartaria to wipe out the tartarians and they succeeded in wiping them out they made their way back and of course then of course you can have napoleon come along and say history is a set of lies agreed upon yeah the holy roman empire is still trying to take down russia today and they have i have heard bishops from rome speaking recently even through this whole cranian shit we want to concentrate consecrate russia under the virgin mary yeah well the orthodox christians and the traditional islam that exists in russia can tell you to go fuck yourselves because you ain't getting it in fact the tables are turning on you rome has been defeated in the past yeah yeah my tv went like there so i'm filming this off a flat screen tv with a mobile phone anybody out there who can bring this siberia tartaria mud flood up in better in better uh in better uh, uh with a better picture philip martin campbell you guys that know a little bit about research, know a little bit about computers, know how to work with this tech, because this is sucking some serious shit. Now these ground penetrating radar people have gone up there and come out with a bullshit story that this is 200 million years old. The people 200 million years ago were running around building fucking 15 story blocks of flats. Right? Whereas this mob went up there with high tech shit and wiped the whole freaking place out. Ah, oh, what did I say? I said I was going to talk about I speculated on what these devices that blew this whole place up might have been made from, okay? So here we go. Water. And the freaking Phoenicians who are masters of water. I found the Phoenicians, by the way. You'll never believe where they've been hiding. It's coming in my next video. So, H2O. That's two parts hydrogen one part oxygen or two molecules hydrogen one molecule oxygen right 66 percent one 33 percent the other so 150 liters of water take that for an example okay that's 100 liters of hydrogen and 50 liters of oxygen now 100 liters of hydrogen will compress into a 12 liter container and 50 liters of oxygen will press into a seven liter container. That's 19 liters. 
So it's two containers combined, totaling 19 liters. If you detonate them together, they will immediately produce 150 liters of water. So I reckon they destroyed the world like this. They had compressed devices, much larger than 150 liters. They were able to send them in this direction and on impact, they detonated and they produced billions of gallons of water. Blew everything to smithereens and left all those pot-marked uh, thermal karst lakes, as they call them. They're all over the United States of America. Looks to me like they were fired from Lake Erie in every direction. And they're all, it's all over Canada, it's all over Alaska, it's all over Siberia. So that's my take on what kind of weapons were fired. Of course, it's, that amount of water will cause a massive flood. But it will leave behind these craters and this dark water that's in them. They're even in Ireland. So that's my take. Mud flood, Siberia, Tartaria. And this little short French bastard who never existed, who's supposed to have gone up there and done all this damage. <sighs> I've been sitting on this information for quite some time, waiting to get a laptop, waiting. It's not that I can't afford a laptop. I just never freaking seen one up close in my life before, and I wouldn't know where to start with it. But... I will get one and I will get some lessons and I will try and make better stuff. But please, somebody, any of you, if you think you can take this a step further, go ahead and take it further.